On our recent visit to Dubai, Art Africa caught up with Carlo Rizzo, director of the Dubai Collection, who shared some background about the collection and their current exhibition, When Images Speak, at the Etihad Museum in Dubai. I'm Carlo Itzo and I'm the special advisor to the Dubai Collection. We're here at Dubai 2022 to uh, introduce you to this initiative. The Dubai Collection is, a, is the first institutional collection for the city of Dubai. It's, a, it's an initiative of uh, Dubai culture in partnership with, uh, with our Dubai group. And uh, it was launched approximately a, a year ago. The idea of the collection is to bring together the private collections of some of the most important uh, patrons of the arts of the Emirate and uh, make these works accessible to the public. The exhibition brings together some of the founding collections of the Dubai Collection and in particular the collection of His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and uh, of other 10, 11 collectors that uh, have joined into this effort and uh, patronized the initiative. It's a collection that uh, predominantly comprises uh, artworks from the Arab world from the second half of the 20th century to the first half of the current century. And uh, we're very delighted uh, to have invited uh, Nada Shabut, uh, professor at University of Dallas uh, and uh, one of the foremost experts in uh, Arab art from the 20th century to curate the show. There are two ways in which the Dubai collection is uh, engaging the public. And the first and probably one of the most important ways is the digital museum. The digital museum brings together high quality images, information and stories about some of the artworks in the collection. And it's really the first point of contact for the public to explore what is in the Dubai collection. The, uh, du the digital museum is also complemented by temporary exhibitions that are independently curated one of which, the first of which, is in the Etihad Museum right now. The first group is called Evoking the Environment, and one of the examples for, uh, in this group is the, is the landscape by Leila Alatar, who is uh, a very interesting portrait that at first might seem figurative and you might discern and images of trees and what seemed to be a, a sunset or a fire. But then the perspective from inside the cave suggests that this is more than anything probably a, a psychological landscape. The second section is called Societies in Transition. And uh, it opens with uh, a very interesting work by Gazbi Asiri called The Six Immigrants. The work shows a group, a family group, with a female figure acting as a sort of backbone of, uh, of the family. And, it's, uh, and it contains five individuals, even though the title suggests that there, are, there is a missing figure. And it's a commentary on how many immigrant families have lost uh, the male in the family. The third section in the exhibition is called Absurd Variations. And it includes a number of works that are, um, in a sense, looking at the development of uh, artistic practices focused on the written word. Many artists from the Arab world have used the written word, calligraphy and script as a basis for artistic practices, but this is by no means the only way in which Arab artists have engaged in the modern and contemporary period with, the, with, the, with abstraction. One really important example is The Falling Dot by Dia Lazawi. It's a painting that shows uh, Azawi's early experimentation with the search for a modern language uh, and he was painting this at a time in which he was very involved with the Iraqi Cultural Institute in, in London and uh, uh, participating in the formation of a modern movement in Baghdad and looking after exchanges between artists uh, in the UK, in Europe and, uh, and in the region and in Baghdad specifically. And I think it's a sign and a testament that several different influences and several different visual references were being looked at by the artists to develop what was a very specific modern language.